the clouds parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Renata knew that using it could go catastrophically wrong. But he was sure he could figure out how to use it safely. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Emperor had brought the Sky Ripper pieces up out of ancient burial by his obscene rituals. Could this be where the Iblis Stone was hidden? Someone better get it before he does, thought Renardo. And also, his old friend Lapino needed rescuing. Of course, Renardo had a pretty strong suspicion that Lapino had betrayed the rebellion. But could Renardo really leave an old friend to the Ravens? The island was windswept desert. No one went there except ostriches and ostrich hunters. The Iblis Stone. It sounded ominous. It sounded powerful. If the Emperor was searching for it, it must be dangerous. And so, Bernardo went ostrich hunting. Every child could sing verses about the Sky Ripper. But ancient codices held hints of other things. A stone that ate souls. A ruby that drank blood. A jewel only a righteous man could give away. Were all these things the Iblis Stone? Long hidden in the buried temple? Another ancient item that was only resurfacing now? Drawn up from the deeps by the Emperor's horrific rituals? Renato distrusted doors that opened automatically, especially after being buried for millennia. Was this some sort of trap? Frustration. They were still searching for a way in. Good. And he hadn't come too late. Renato felt like he was bursting with knowledge. But what kind? needed some way to break the ice with this wall, so to speak.
Hmm. A road less traveled. This could be fun. If it wasn't fatal, that is. Renato was running out of ideas. Zenobia loved him to death. The Sky Ripper destroyed everything. Lapino was a filthy traitor. Using a stone name for an evil god seemed uh, unwise. But what else was there? The mysterious sword from the east made you so fast you could catch a fly with your chopsticks. If that's what you really wanted. compensating for that. Stronger, bolder. If only he could figure out which. The ravens, at least, could not get past this point. Obviously, the temple builders knew how to deal with tomb raiders. Always wanted to do that. It reflected no light, 
like a void made solid. Nervous, he picked it up. I can't hate you, mighty. Who said that? It was the stone, eager, thirsty. That seemed tempting and terribly wrong. Zenobia was the Emperor's greatest general and a potent witch, but they had been close once, and Renardo wasn't sure he really wanted to be Emperor. Why not capture the core of Sky Ripper instead? It was the eye of a lost god torn out by the transcendent Emperor to power his greatest weapon. What's the core? said the stone anxiously. The stone bothered him. He hated being told what to do. Wasn't that why he joined the rebellion? Wasn't that why he'd refused to be a soldier? He'd agreed to come on board only if he could freelance. The stone felt a bit clingy. The sage Calaveras had told him where to find the Sky Ripper, a weapon capable of challenging the gods. Even without its armature, the core would still possess great power. He would go there. The moment he landed the Farfarer, Renardo had a rare feeling of regret. It's not too late, he thought. He could turn around and sail for Zenobia's island. He frowned. Wait a minute. He didn't want to kill Zenobia, did he? Sure, technically she was the enemy, but they'd been at sword food school together. They'd never been lovers, but somehow they'd been closer. She'd told him every secret about herself. Except the biggest one. That she was the Emperor's daughter. No, no. Kill Sylvia. Whispered the stone. Before it's too late. What could he craft with the materials he had? Renato had a pretty good idea, actually. This chest was filled with reprints of the entire Sandman series. Reprints? God, what was the point of collecting those? Ooh, and there was something else. Surprisingly, 
There was something sour in the air. Like the earth had ruptured over something that had been fermenting for a very long time. You almost never saw wild gogglers together like this. The toads had to train them not to peck each other to death. These had to be imperial gogglers. That meant ravens were up ahead. What was really fun was hooking yourself onto a moving ship. The stone hadn't lied about what it could do for him. With each raven he cut down, he felt a jolt of power flowing into his arm. You're weak, whispered the stone. The call will kill you. Are you afraid of it? <laughs> no, don't be ridiculous. It chuckled. But, but, but it's unstable. It's it a poison you, so I just carry it. And then if you try to use it, it will explode catastrophically. Bernardo did not trust rocks that talked in his head. He went onwards. See? With enough leverage, you could go anywhere. As he approached the core, the stone became hysterical. No, it's too much power. We will rip a hole in Spencer and time. He had a sudden vision of plunging his gauntlet into the core and dying in anguish. That wasn't his vision, was it? The stone had sent him its darkest fears, hadn't it? He had a sudden impulse to do exactly that. He raised his right fist and plunged it into the core. There was a rush of light. He thought he could hear the stone screaming. And then he passed out. When Renato came to, the core was gone. But the Ibla stone was no longer black, but glowing with a blue light. And it was silent. I can't hear you, he sang out. And you who? It didn't answer. Ha, he said. He had defeated the demonic gem with the power of his mind. Oh, he felt invincible. It was time to attack the Imperial outpost on the Nexus. Take the battle to the enemy. But among the huge crystals, there was also an observatory. A wise man would probably ask the scientists exactly what he had first. Hmm. How wise was he? As the Farfarer made its way toward the Nexus, Bernardo watched sparks fly out of the core. The Ibla stone sucked them in hungrily. You'd think the stone would want this kind of power, wouldn't it? Thought Bernardo. Well, the scientists would explain it all. This time, Bernardo was sure he'd figured out how to use the core safely. See? He'd trusted his gut, and it had worked out. That's what it meant to be a hero. To ignore the naysayers and the odd makers, and do what you knew was right, and have it turn out to be the right thing. Well, he wasn't worried. 
Once he got to the observatory, the scientist toads could explain it. Then he could carry the war into the enemy's camp and destroy them all. Oh dear, he was getting a little bloodthirsty, wasn't he? Think of all the artisans he was creating employment for. Truly, he was a job creator. in his life. Normally, a battle would wear him down and he would need a night's sleep. Now he felt like he could go all night and all day. He felt like people were cheering him on and he could practically hear their applause as he slew one raven after another. There was an inscription. Praise the sun. Iblis Stone and the Sky Ripper Core. Two artifacts from the time of legends. Renato was becoming a legendary hero, wasn't he? He had enough power to save the rebellion, but he had to understand this power so he would not misuse it. energy balls, immune to the laws of gravity. The toads at the observatory measured the stone with their occult devices. I fed it the core of Sky Ripper, explained Renato. No more Phoebe Pallant souls. But the core is not an unlimited energy source, said one toad. Another said, there's a feedback loop, you see, which could overload the stone. If the stone doesn't actually feed on souls, claimed the third. But on pain of killing another sentient being, if you can truly be at peace with yourself, it would not overload. This was all very confusing. At peace? 
Yes, the mountains were peaceful and quiet, but he now had the power to turn the tides. He should report to the Rebellion Council and prepare for the decisive battle. The one thing he understood from all the Toad arguments, maybe the stone did not feed on blood or souls or rage. It fed on empathy. It fed on the pain he felt when he put an end to another being's existence. Even if that other being was a raven intent on killing him, if he could find peace, then he could use the power of the Ibla Stone without being taken over by its evil, the mountains. He would go to the mountains. He could find peace there. Unfortunately, the mountains were not empty. There were ravens everywhere, no matter. He had to fight, yes, but he didn't have to be angry. Parry, dodge, slash, and breathe. Yes, focus on the rhythm, the dance of it. Not on the blood or the raven's call as they died. Ah, oh, it was working. He wasn't feeling those dark jolts of eldritch energy. He wasn't feeding the Iblis Stone. He was sort of yanking his own shape, wasn't he? Stone was still silent. His mind was his own, and his heart, too. He bore them no ill will, these ravens. They were doing their job. They were expressing their nature. Dance, whirl, parry, jab, and breathe. It was all so simple, wasn't it? Something was missing. Hmm, he didn't feel truly at peace. Wait. Wasn't this near where Calaveras lived? Ah, the sage would help him figure it all out. Take a leap of faith, said the inscription. Just have a dash, thought Renato.
sometimes when I really hated inanimate objects. Silenced by the Skyripper's core, had given Renato enough power to challenge the Imperial fleet. But what Renato was seeking was inner peace. The rebellion was on the verge of extinction, but it would have to wait. At the end of the mountain path, he found the wise Calaveras in his workshop. Do you fix souls or only artifacts? He asked the sage. Does your uh, soul need fixing? Asked the sage. I've been killing a lot of ravens lately. He told the sage. You're, you're, a, you're a fox, said Calaveras. And, and to kill birds is, is, is part of your nature. You should take joy in it. I mean, I might as well worry about eating flies. Would you like a fly? It was true. That's what he had forgotten. The joy. Now he was ready for the final battle. The Farfarer cut through the clouds. The air had never felt so sweet since he was a child. There it was, the dreaded Imperial fleet. He could smell wet hemp ropes ahead, wood and tar and ravens. Even the fleet smelled good somehow. He was ready. Mm, he was ready. Renato had it all squared away in his head. He would kill the Emperor. Isengrim III had begun well, but he had gone mad. He was trying to invoke the lost gods by means of dark, blasphemous rituals. That was a secret. But the victims had spoken to Renato. The ghosts had spoken. No. No anger. Renato could not afford anger. It was empowering the crystal in his sword. That made him stronger, but it clouded his mind. He would not be a hero. A hero strives. Bernardo would just be one with everything. The Emperor would die, and the wheel would turn, and all would be restored without rancor, without sorrow, without pain. This would look familiar. Had he lost this one in a card game? Welcome back, he thought. But the more he thought about it, and he had so much more time to think about it now that he was not worrying about the battle, killing the Emperor would not change anything. Another would take his place. Perhaps Zenobia. Perhaps the Speaker of the Rebel Council, and power would corrupt them too, and death would make grief, and grief would lead to hatred. Uh, he must lead by example. Reject the violence. Reject the desire to create violence. But how? Renato wondered what would happen if he jumped. Would he be rescued by an emergency platform?
will always have Paris, he thought. And then he died. Finally, he came to the Emperor's ship. The path behind him was strewn with dead ravens. The path to enlightenment. His mistake, he realized, was trying to change the world. The world would spin and the wheel would revolve whether he strove against it or not. What he had to do was nothing. He had attained enlightenment. He sat down, adopted a full lotus position, and began to meditate. And all around him, the warriors stopped fighting too. They knew they could feel his enlightenment. They gave up fighting, dropped their weapons, and became his disciples. <laughs> no, just kidding. The nearest raven stabbed him with a sword and then chopped off his head. I might not have thought this through properly. Thought Renato's head as it rolled around the deck and died. Oh, damn it. He lost again and died. But there was burning Ubar behind him. He still had all his destinies ahead of him. But he'd learned another true thing. The Iblis Stone was evil. It would try to corrupt anyone who used it. 